इतना सफर है कुछ होने में और बहुत कुछ होने में इतना सफर है एक बार सोच के छोड़ देने में और लग के कर दिखाने में मान लेने में कि जिंदगी ऐसे ही कटेगी और सुबह चार बजे उठ के सोचने में कि अभी तो बस शुरुआत है किसी मैगजीन को हाथ में लेने में और उसी मैगजीन के कवर पेज पे होने में इतना सा ही तो फर्क है वीआईपी सीट में और उसकी पिछली सीट में इतना सा ही तो फर्क है वो जिसका मैदान ही खुला आसमान है वही कल जमीन पर तो था पूछोगे तो बताएगा वो पंछी एक दायरे में सिमटने में और पूरी दुनिया को दायरा बनाने में बस इतना सा फर्क है इतना कितना है इतना है या इतना है जो नापेगा वो जाने कि जहां धरती और आसमान मिलते हैं ना नगुर से दूर अगर मगर शायद से दूर वहां भी दोनों में फर्क बस इतना सा है धरती और सातवें आसमान में फर्क बस इतना सा है ये एक अंतर प्रेरणा है ये हमारी आपकी हम सब की अंतर प्रेरणा है एक कदम एक छलांग एक बाजी एक गहरी सांस और एक ललकार खुली हवाओं में कि हां मैं बना हूं उन फिजाओं के लिए कि हां मैं बना हूं उन ऊंचाइयों के लिए जो ऊंची तो बहुत है पर नामुमकिन भी नहीं क्योंकि मुमकिन और नामुमकिन में बस इतना सा धूप छाओ में फर्क बस इतना सा तो बस चलिए फ्रेंचाइज इंडिया के साथ ये फर्क मिटा दे फ्रेंचाइज इंडिया Twenty years of ideas. Good afternoon, one and all. Thank you so much, Dheeraj, for playing the corporate video of Franchise India, which truly depicts the kind of the value and passion we follow every day. We truly believe in the rainbow of initiatives and achievement, and that inspires us to take initiatives every day. We believe in strong partnership between and investors. Franchise India is Asia's largest rated franchise solution company, which was established in 1999, and we completely enjoy a third on franchising license in retail real estate. We have helped thousands of investors selecting the right business opportunity, while helping and assisting numerous organizations in their international and domestic. Franchise expansion, introduce and develop franchise market in India. We completely focus on franchise ecosystem through our dynamic service platform. We cater to investors across all industries and categories like F&B. We welcome each one of you to great effort of business for you with a webinar series, an initiative which we took on first of May and till now we have reap. Good morning, friends, and uh, this is Gaurav Maria, and the chairman of Franchise India. So, Arjuna's, uh, I think, some network issues there. So, I would like to take over and maybe make an introduction. Uh, this is a, a very, very special webinar for us, uh, you know, and this also reflects on the entrepreneurial demand in this country. Uh, how it is? Uh, we exactly one week back, uh, we brought growers on board, and. Uh, Uh, and that's where are started reaching out to our potential investors i personally have never seen so much of response so overwhelmed uh in the morning i personally have sent about uh, 300 people who wrote to us and and messages and i think my colleague sonia is also on a call she had actually sent about 300 and today we will have about 5000 people who will watch us live on facebook attend our uh, webinar so i can only say a big thank you to all of you to really trust Uh, our platform and continue to come this is also about an opportunity which you all have identified can be a great opportunity this is a opportunity about a company which is getting into o2o which is from online to offline this is an opportunity which is a stable business because the business itself of a, what i call a supermarket business or a uh, you know grocery business or a basic uh, staple business is very stable everybody looks at a stability at this stage 
Uh, but this also is an opportunity to partner with something which is very progressive, a company which comes from a technology and then they got into direct to home business and now direct to your neighborhood business. So we have Suyodhan had who has who has a leadership team of growers who would be part of a presentation and give us a background about uh, Grofer as a company. But today we is a special webinar because we will have a lot of people. So we would like to pick up questions which are very important ones. Uh, so we are seeing this uh, uh, the people are joining in and so go on a Q and A box and ask your question. We'll try to put maybe another 20 25 minutes extra. Uh, today, because we want to really make sure that everybody is heard, everybody is entirely. And if you would be interested in taking a franchise for a particular city, because we, I would say that in next one or two days we'll get about thousand applications, and these thousand applications cannot be processed. Uh, we are only selecting about uh, two hundred odd applications out of those thousand applications or more. Uh, and because the kind of response which we have, because even before this webinar, this never happened in history of franchise India. Also, since we have started doing webinar, that we have more applications actually before webinar also happening. So we are very very particular that we pick up the good applications and bring it uh, to Grofer team to really evaluate and approve. Particularly if you have your own location and real estate available. So I'll not take uh, more time. I wanted to just introduce because I think uh, Archana's uh, uh, voice was breaking up. So welcome, Siodhan. Uh, over to you. It's all yours, and you can already see the kind of uh, response we've already got. And so over to you in your good hands now for for seeing the presentation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Maria. Thank you. That was a wonderful introduction, and uh, yeah, it's it's very welcoming, you know, to see such a good participation in a weekend in the afternoon of a Saturday. So first of all, thank you everyone uh, for joining us. I. Uh, really look forward to interacting. I really look forward to, uh, you know, presenting what is in store for you guys for the day. And uh, what I'll also would like to take a lot of question and answers from you. And, you know, probably, uh, you know, we could start it off without any further ado. Yeah. So, uh, so I would just uh, quickly uh, share my screen, Mr. Maria, would that be cool? Yeah, please, please, please go ahead. Yes. So I'll uh, quickly uh, set the agenda for the day. So firstly, I'll just give you a brief introduction of uh, what is Grofers and what is Grofers Market. I uh, will talk uh, and spend some time on discussing what's the opportunity and uh, what's the business model. And then probably we'll break out for uh, question Q and A's, right? So uh, I'll just quickly on what Grofers has been, right? Grofers has been there for uh, over the last seven years, right? So this December we'll be seven, uh, celebrating our uh, seventh anniversary in fact, right? So the way that we have first started off was as an online aggregator platform, wherein we were bringing grocery stores online and we were trying to, uh, you know, build a platform for people to buy groceries online. And over, uh, you know, a couple of years later, when we had figured out, you know, what exactly we would want to stand for and what exactly our customers are looking for, right, is that when we had figured out, you know, there is a very strong demand for savings on groceries, but there was no very good supply in the market, right? Typically, if you had seen how the growth, how the uh, grocery retail market has been, is that 90, 95% of it has been predominantly our offline, offline space, right? And even, even over the last few years, right, we had uh, typically gotten to 5% in the online space. Right? So there was significantly a lot of demand coming from the offline space as well, right? And that is when we had sort of started, you know, we, while we were expanding tremendously as an online player, right, we had started exploring opportunities on the offline front as well. And that sort of brings us to what uh, Grofer's market is today. And uh, after a couple of years of experimenting and trying out different models offline, right, is when we had sort of figured out what exactly Grofer's market should be and how do you want to take it to the customers. So what exactly are we trying to solve for, right? So there is, if you look at the majority of the population, there is a significant middle India population who are still looking for savings on groceries. There is, of course, a premium segment who would who would not, uh, you know, want to save much on the groceries. But significantly and predominantly, if you see uh, the population at large, right, they have been, you know, uh, willing to get uh, savings on groceries, but they were not very good opportunities. And that is when we had sort of figured out that, you know, we have to be able to bring that efficiency in the supply chain to be able to pass on that savings. And that is how our entire, entire model 
online also has been right so we were we were able to build that efficiency in the supply chain so that we are able to pass on uh, those discounts to the partner to the customers yeah. so now where does the partner come into play or where does uh, how does how do you build accessibility in the indian space right this is when we had started figuring out you know how do we want to bring out that organized retail into the unorganized segment is when we had sort of figured out that you know we should we would want to involve local entrepreneurs right local entrepreneurs who would want to get into the retail segment who would want to you know take responsibility of building a a grocery uh, you know uh, you know uh, a space in the in the, in their vicinity right is what you know we sort of wanted to uh, you know partner with and this is how we had sort of uh, you know came with the model of grofers market wherein we were bringing the best of uh, the supply chain of an organized retailer to the entrepreneurial skills and to that uh, neighborhood experience that could be built only by a, a local entrepreneur right so if you ask me what exactly is grofers going to bring into picture and what are we expecting for the partner to do right so grofers would take care of your supply so we will be your single point supplier and we will make sure that the supply happens to you as efficiently as possible right and when i say that uh, we will be your single point supplier we would make sure that we are able to put the maximum optimal inventory in the store right matlab waha pe essentially we will put we'll try to put uh, what is selling there and whatever is not selling there we'll pick it back right so essentially your inventory is never going to go waste so that is how we sort of want to build the supply chain also and of course this comes with the caveat that we should be able to predict what is going to sell there and we should be able to ensure that you know we are able to put what is going to sell there so which is where we are saying that we will be the single point supplier over there okay. next you will get a good access to grofers platform so essentially uh, you just you just put your store ready and you have your grofers online platform ready you have uh, the offline uh, softwares and offline platforms whichever you need to uh, you know build in terms of uh, your inventory management system your customer management system you have access to all the grofers platforms ready right? apart from that you will get day to day insights into how to build your business how to uh, you know increase your customer base how to increase your customer retention how to get them to come back to your store more often you know how do you how should you be able to build uh your customer experience so we will be also taking care of those sops by training your staff and by providing you with those technology insights when we say that you know uh, these are the uh, these are the these are the rules or guidelines that we would want you to follow to sort of uh, ensure that this experience is you know getting converted into what the customer is expecting right so what we expect from the partner is to take care of essentially two things the store operations make sure that we are able to run the store most optimally make sure we are able to you know provide that uh, uh, the inventory provide that sort of uh, you know the value proposition that what we are trying to drive to the customer and of course in the end what all would all of this would translate into building that customer experience wherein the customer gets hooked on to us and then you know he would keep coming back to us so essentially the way that we would want to build this is so now uh, there is an offline need and there is an online need right a customer would want to go to online for certain purchases and they would want to go to offline for certain purchases why shouldn't grofers be able to serve both of these right and while we are doing so why should we not you know enable the entrepreneur uh, you know skills in a lot of uh, people who are actually getting who are actually willing to get into the retail space right that is the whole point of what grofers market has been right so uh mr maria or uh, sonia if uh, if you have any comments so far i hope i'm not going to no far. i think you can go ahead so we will take up the questions uh, at the end of your presentation so we are only doing a good job in answering a lot of questions uh, regularly because okay. i think we will have hundreds of people writing so so we trying to do as much we can do yeah sure sure thank you so uh this is how a grofers market store would look like so we have close to uh, 12 stores right now we are launching few stores every day so we are we would be uh, you know launching probably in, in the next 10 days we will be launching around five stores and later in the next 30 days we will be launching another 10 stores so we are expanding as fast as possible and the way the only way that we want to go uh, you know to expand about this is through grofers market chain right so even i think our online platform is going to sort of now get into a shape where we are able to bank on these offline stores right where 
able to create as many outlets as possible and then enable our online orders also from these stores. So this is the uh, sort of uh, experience that we want to build to. And of course, these are the best uh, places for this to be your tier two and tier three and tier four cities, wherein we are able to get into the most residential colonies and we are able to cater to around 10,000 families every month. Right? So this is how the stores would be looking like. And uh, these are your typically 1,000 to 2,000 square foot stores. So we would uh, we would be putting everything that's on shelf for inventory uh, for online as well. So you will have the maximum churn both coming in from your online and offline sales, which is where you'll see the fastest churn in an inventory. And that is how we try to rotate the working capital as much as possible so that you can derive returns on a significantly less working capital. And of course, the way that we would do this is through our inventory system, wherein we get a real time visibility on your inventory. And, you know, uh, we are able to put what is selling and, uh, you know, we are able to pull back what is not selling. So I'll uh, quickly move uh, to the financials. Just a minute. So I won't take too much time uh, in the financials because this, this will be explained to you uh, in much further detail later on. So I'll just briefly touch upon how the model would look like. So, uh, so uh, the investment is going to be like, I would briefly put into three buckets. So you would have the setup costs, uh, then you would have the franchisee fee and you would have uh, your uh, working capital, right? So you would set up costs would vary from the, uh, from around eight lakhs to 12 lakhs, depending on the size of the store. Uh, five lakhs would be your brand fee, five lakhs plus GST. And you have uh, your working capital, which is your uh, you know uh, variable capital, and you have your fixed capital, which is your one-time cost, would be your uh, would be around uh, you know like I said, uh, eight, uh, 13 lakhs to seventeen lakhs, right? And fifteen to sixteen lakhs would be your working capital. So uh, I would not go too deep into the setup cost, so you would get that in much in detail later. Uh, what I would want to now sort of look at is what is the revenue going to look like? So essentially, if I look at the margins, right? If I look at the margins what we would want to uh, pass on and what Grofus essentially stands for is being to able to provide the best prices, pricing on products, right? The way that we want to do is to give the best discounts to the customer. So that there comes a first proposition wherein we say that after giving out a very good discount to the customer, which sort of averages out around 15 to 20% on the basket size, right? You would get around 10 to 12% in gross margin, right? So now, uh, then the commissions that we charge would be on the gross margin and not on your sales, because this is where we clearly want to point out that, you know, unless and until you're making money, we are not making any money on that. So, which is where we are saying we will charge a, a royalty on your gross margin and for offline and online, the margins would be different essentially, right? So the, uh, the royalty on the, on the offline sale would be 20%. On the gross margin and for online sale it would be 45 percent on the gross margin right so assuming around 12 10 percent in the gross margin two percent would be uh, your royalty offline and four and a half percent would be your royalty online so net net uh so i would uh, still uh, you know leave these financials for uh, explanation in detail when you get uh, you know on board onto the platform and then further you could get in touch with our representatives from franchise india Right. So probably I'll leave it for that. Uh, but then net net, what I would want to point out is that you would be getting an ROI of around 15, 16% at an average sale of around 45 to 50 lakhs uh, from an online and offline, right? Uh, this is where I would uh, sort of stop because I just don't want to invest too much time on the financials if that's okay, yeah? Would that be all right? Yep. Yes, so why partner with us? So quick break even, that's what we get, right? The way that we do is maximizing efficiency in your working capital. The way that we would churn your working capital is to optimize on how much revenue per square foot you're able to generate and how fast you're able to generate that. So which is where we say that, you know, we will be able to reach a break even on your uh, OPEX in about three to six months and on your uh, total investment in about two years. Uh, what you would see is uh, uh, return on investment around of 15%, which is what we expect 
uh, in the longer run when you hit a steady state where you are getting enough sales online and offline, right? And of course, what you would get most out of it is the Growforce Association, wherein we are saying that from day one, you have that guarantee on your uh, on your store saying that, you know, this is an established outlet, you can come here and you would get the same quality and experience what, you know, is uh, provided elsewhere, right? Which is where we would want, uh, you know, to ensure that uh, we are able to provide the consistent customer experience and operational efficiency across our stores. Okay. Uh, so what, how do we support you? So of course we'll support you in terms of taking care of uh, how do you select the best location and how do you select the best uh, property for the store? How do you launch the store in minimum lead time, right? Without from the time of agreement, what we take on is what we call a 30 day launch challenge, wherein we say that from the day you sign the agreements and get on board and apply for your licenses, right? We would want to launch your store in as early as 30 days. Uh, of course, this depends on how ready the infrastructure, how ready the store is when it was handed over to us. But this is the target that we look at, right? Of course, we would give you a consistent support in terms of both launch and marketing, wherein we say that we will keep, uh, you know, we will be with you from day one and we will keep guiding you on what sort of marketing you're supposed to do and how should your communication look like, how should your uh, visuals look like, and, you know, how. What, where should you be targeting your marketing efforts and where should be targeting your expenditures and everything, right? So we will keep guiding you uh, throughout the thing. We will also be providing you a training in sales and inventory management. We will be, uh, you know, with you in the first uh, first couple of weeks wherein we have our personnel at your store training, uh, you know, the store team and training them to sort of get to, uh, you know, speed on how to uh, run the store efficiently. Right? Of course, you have a growth supply chain in most cities right now. So we are online in across 28 cities and we are soon expanding. And we have about uh, warehouses in across 17 cities and we are soon expanding there as well, right? So which is where we say that we already have built in that uh, efficiency in our supply chain and which is where we would be able to, you know, support you in terms of making that availability, uh, you know, consistent at your store, right? Of course, you would be getting our softwares, our data analytics tools from day one, wherein you would see what's happening in the store uh, on your portal and you keep getting, you know, uh, time to time updates on how is your store performing and, you know, where you should be improving and stuff. And the way that we would do the whole thing is through a dedicated spot. So there would be one person from Growforce who would be allocated to each of these stores who would be the single point of contact for anything and everything that you would be requiring at uh, Growforce, right? What are we looking for? So essentially, we are looking for people who are here to build business and who are here to build business with a single-minded customer in focus, right? So what, what are we looking for again is a thousand to 2000 square foot of space. So this space should ideally be in your residential colonies, uh, not in a very fancy area, given our target segment is the middle, middle class and upper middle class, uh, uh, the population. Right. So our target would be in, uh, you know, in good residential colonies where we have a uh, good density of population around the store, uh, about 4,000 to 10,000 families in a one kilometer radius. Uh, and you'd see about, uh, uh, you know, this, this store being on the way or to the, to, the, uh, uh, to the office or on the way back home. So, you know, these are the sort of uh, properties that we would be looking at. I, like I said, your total investment would be around 25 to 30 lakhs, wherein uh, around 15 lakhs would be your uh, uh, setup and your uh, brand fee, and 15 lakhs would be your uh, working capital. Um, just a minute. Yeah. What we expect from you, we expect from you to be able to provide that 100% customer satisfaction, what we want to drive. Right? We, we, we want you to be able to manage uh, the store and manage the manpower to drive that uh, that efficiency. Uh, you know, like I said, we would have a spark in coordination with you, right? So we want the way that we would want to do is we want you to get as much as uh, possible from the spark, and we want you to be more curious. You know how to be able to drive the business, and we want essentially people who are you know. So we, we, we would obviously be selecting people, you know, based on how curious they are and, you know, how excited they are to start the business, right? But what we want, you know, even going forward is to be able to, uh, 
uh, you know that that excitement and that anxiety to you know sort of build the business. This is what we would be very closely looking for, right? and of course, uh, you know we would be we we would want to uh, you know look for people who are able to build that uh, you know relationship uh, with the customers and who are able to get them to come back to store, right? So, like I said, there's a 30 day store challenge. Uh, the way that we would look at, so there are a set of licenses with everything that uh, you know you would be uh, looking for. I would not spend too much time on this. Uh, so I'll just uh, I just have a few uh, one slide here where I'll take a few questions. You know, which I think a lot of you guys would want to uh, know. So I'll just spend a couple of minutes answering these, and anything outside these, I'll be happy to. You know, sort of uh, take in person, take 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 later, right? Yeah. Sorry, cool. So yes, uh, firstly, can I have more than one store? Yes, uh, first you can have more than one store. Uh, but the way that we would want is we want, you know, probably to start off one store and then see, you know, how the relationship builds between between the partner and the and and Rufus and you know, we want to take further. Uh, what will be my inventory? Who decides it? So the way that we uh, put our inventory, right, is to be able to pass on the discounts, to be able to pass on best pricing to the customer, right? So that way, we do not hold too much in inventory. We hold what is required, and we hold what we are able to pass on the best discounts on. So we would limit the inventory to, uh, you know, what. Uh, what Grofer's team would be, uh, you know, deciding. So we have an inventory a team in the back end who sort of benchmarks from time to time what is selling and you know what is at what prices they are selling and how do you price it and stuff. So we would be taking suggestions from them. Of course, uh, uh, the way that we would replenish inventory is also uh, based on how fast it is selling at the store and everything, right? Uh, so of course we would be taking an inputs from, from uh, the partners as well in terms of any additional inventory that they would require, which is not uh, in the current list that they're getting or uh, in the current uh, 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 assortment. But the limit would be that, you know, we would be our single point supplier. And we are saying this because we build our entire supply efficiency and we guarantee returns when, uh, you know, when something is not selling on the model that, you know, we're able to pass on, uh, we're able to uh, put what is best and we're able to, you know, pull back what is not selling, right? So, which is where we say that, so we'll be your single point supplier and we would not want to put anyone else uh, you know uh, in the store of course in the categories that we do not deal in uh, you could outsource so these are the categories uh, which we would be uh, you know discussing later in, in later stages uh, but typically these would include what growers doesn't deal in currently right for example uh, uh, fruits and vegetables in some places or uh, bakery items in some places this is very specific to the place and which is where you know this could be uh, taken up in further detail on later discussions, right? Uh, so I think next couple of questions also have answered, yeah. Do, I, do you have to place an order to supply? No, you don't have to place an order. So you have a Grofer's POS, which is our proprietary POS system. Uh, and we have a on the inventory, a real-time visibility on the inventory. So when something hits the bottom, right? And if we see that something is gonna get stocked out soon, we, the way that we would want is we would be replenishing it uh, in the next consignment. Right. So that is how we would be building uh, the supply, wherein you would not have to worry about, uh, you know, getting the inventory, you know, haggling in terms of how do you price it, how am I going to negotiate the prices and everything. So this is all something that Grofus will take care of you, for you, right? What if something is not selling? Like I said, if something is not selling, we'll pick it back. Is the pricing fixed? Are the margins fixed? No, the prices are not fixed. The margins are not fixed. The prices, they vary based on multiple factors, including what the brand... Uh, you know, what the brands decide, how the competition is benchmarking and how the markets are performing, right? So accordingly, we'll be, uh, you know, uh, pricing the products on multiple principles. But apart from that, uh, you know, the way that the margins would look is depending on the mix of what you sell. So some products have much lesser margins, some products have much higher margins. On an average, what you would see is around 10 to 12%, but this probably vary just uh, we totally vary so on you know what is your uh, store uh, product mix is going to look like okay uh, how often will i get supply is there any extra charge there is no extra charge and you will get uh, supply as often as uh, how how fast your sale uh, looks like right so if you are able to sell uh, you know about 1 lakh every day then you will be probably you know getting a replenishment every other day 
and if you are able to sell around 2 lakhs in a week so you will be getting replenishment in about 3 to 4 days so that is how your uh, you know supply cycle going to look like it typically varies on how fast your store is selling the inventory is there a minimum guarantee return there is no minimum guarantee return uh, because we believe that you know our entire value proposition is to make sure that we are able to pass on the best value to the customer and when we are able to do so we don't believe in anything as a minimum guarantee return we want the partners to work with us we want the partners to work hard with us and make sure that we are able to get as much return from the business as possible and the entire the point of this is to be able to you know drive uh, you know the entrepreneurs and drive the people to you know be able to uh, get customers and be able to you know maximize on uh, you know uh, retaining the customers uh, can you start online deliveries only uh, no because see we the way that we are expanding our online is also going to be from the stores so the way that we will be looking at is uh, on we would be going uh, opening a store and from there we would be uh, you know opening out our online deliveries as well okay. can i convert my existing store into growth first market uh, again no we would be opening stores from ground up so we don't want stores which have already a certain perception in mind so wherein we are saying that we want to create perception of that property of that store from ground up right so which is where we would not be going to open you know partner with the existing stores what's the territory exclusivity the territory exclusivity is about 1 km radius 1 km radius would be anywhere about 3 to 4 km but again it depends from place to place and it depends from a city to city you know how far this next store is going to open and of course we would not want to open two stores as close as possible if we are uh, you know not able to uh, uh, you know serve the entire demand just from one store right so this will be very discretionary uh, does everything match with online uh, yes and no uh, currently we do not have uh, the loyalty program that we have online for offline stores but what we would be want uh, what we would be sort of driving in later stages is to be able to build a uh, you know a loyalty program for our offline and online customers okay. uh, and your pricing essentially online and offline would be similar but there would be variations online you know that could be happening as a function of time uh, specifically because at an offline store there is a cost attached to uh, you know changing the pricing at the store whereas it is much more flexible in online which is where you would see uh, you know uh, the pricing matching across majority of the products but there would be certain time lags or variations how will grofer support in marketing so of course uh, the way that we would put uh, support in marketing is of course your price your product and your uh, uh, place is taken care of right so we are supporting you essentially in all these three in your promotions the way that you will be supporting is your online marketing and online promotions is entirely taken care of for offline and for specific a store related marketing we would be supporting you with the designs and with the insights on how you're going to execute it but the execution would be upon stores simply because this at a scale would be possible only when we leave the entire uh, you know uh, work to the stores right so which is where we are saying that the execution would be on on the stores and we will be supporting you with uh, the designs the collaterals and everything centered so uh, that's all i have in the presentation i think i have not overshot in time uh, so mr maria i would uh, leave to you mr ms sumit please sure thank you thank you very much uh, for a lovely presentation i just finished 100 answers uh, which we gave uh, and there is about 77 more to read the answers so i i tell myself that if i would have actually given these answers in my school days i would have been first right uh, in the class. So it's uh, so much of inquiries and so many questions. So I, I think a lot of repetitive ones also because people are asking about their cities and they're asking about which cities are open and uh, they can do that. And I should congratulate actually two markets which are remarkable in our, our webinars. One is uh, Andhra Telangana. I think the yeah. most entrepreneurial yeah. market where always we get the best. I should really say complimenting to people who joined us from Andhra Telangana. You are the most entrepreneurial community in this country and every time we get the maximum amount of inquiry but now also another market which is suddenly wake up as is up you know we see a lot of good inquiries coming from up and smaller cities from places like jaunpur or even a smaller as jhansi agra and places like that so while these are big cities old cities and a big opportunity 
So friends, uh, thank you very much once again for joining us on this, this very, very special webinar. Uh, we are overwhelmed by your response. Uh, please go very specific on the Q&A box. We try to answer everybody. We still have about 89 questions to answer while we have done about 101 already. Uh, and I think by the time we end the webinar, there will be more and more questions. So go very specific, ask about uh, specific details. You want to really do that. So Sonia and I would uh, really try to get uh, your answers uh, being done. Uh, and also be specific if you have your own property. Some people are saying they're first floor, they have entire thing. So it's a ground floor location. They prefer every retailer, especially food and uh, FMCG. It has to be done on the ground floor because a lot of unloading has happened. Uh, you need to have a truck movement because truck comes and supplies. So let me start with uh, the first part is that O2O is not only an opportunity for India, it's an opportunity for a globe. Even Amazon is globally opening up their own small stores because they are all talking about super hyper local. Super hyper local means that you will get the deliveries in 130 minutes or less. So now the, look at the convenience you got when you go on an app and order from Grofer and if your store is just in the neighborhood, Grofer would deliver you also. So it's an it's a integration of an online and a retail business. Phenomenal opportunity. I feel that India uh, would have a very large expansion happening on this and Grofer is a special company which has in remarkably captured their supply chain. It's very difficult, it's very complex because FMCG, the supply chain, the life cycles, and the, and the you know and the delivery cycles are very very demanding very demanding even the biggest of the groups i don't want to name them had a huge challenge to really fix that but we've all seen in last couple of years that how grofer has become a household name where you whenever you want to order anything you actually order that but the life cycle was still about a day uh, to do that now what the problem they're trying to solve is that they would be in the neighborhood which brings in a great amount of trust great amount of product uh, mix they are also uh, a discounted format, so they get better offers than any other retailer in the market, which I will try to uh, take my first question on. So let me start with the first question. Uh, it's a no doubt that India is the largest Kriyana story, right? So every to every 60 Indians, we have one store. Yeah. And now we are coming in and competing on one side, the big boys, which are in the retail space. Now, I mean, obviously, there is a big boy has become even bigger because of the merger of uh, uh, two big companies on a retail side and on the other side we are looking at this Kriyana owner who's a who's who has efficiency last mile connect and things like that. so the answer you're trying to solve and the usp grofer is bringing in uh, what is that usp where do you see that there there is a, a the bridge which will do that i mean uh, over to you uh sure. so mr Mario, so see that is uh, you know exactly the problem which we are trying to solve right wherein on one end, there is a very strong network of Kiranas. And on the other end, there is an organized retail that is growing, right? But what we had seen in organized retail is that, you know, this something like this works only when there is someone, uh, you know, invested uh, in the store and who's someone, you know, who owns the operations and who's able to build that network similar to what a Kirana store does, right? And What's the problem that the Kirana store solves is, you know, being hyper local and being be able to, you know, get what the customer wants and, you know, build that customer connect. But they still pass on, they are not able to pass on the discounts to the customer. Right? Typically, you would find majority of products being sold at MRP. So what if we are able to, you know, make that supply chain efficient for them? Right? What if we are able to, you know, build a store that hyper local, you know, and that, uh, uh, you know, uh, close to the customers like a Kirana store and be able to support it with our supply chain, right? So wherein, and if if that is possible and if we once established that, then I could probably expand my online there in that network. And this typically works phenomenally in tier two, tier three cities wherein, you know, these stores are able to, you know, pinpoint which customer stays where and, you know, they are able to, you know, be able to build that customer connect both online and offline, right? So this is where we see, uh, you know, Grofer's market coming into picture. Yeah, very important. I think uh, uh, what uh, is actually, is a combination, I call it, ki yes. bahut bada combination hai, what I call warmth and credibility and yes. competence. So credibility and competence comes with Grofer because they're a technology company, better supply chain, better purchase, 
better discount to the customer. That comes from a competence. This is not built in a day. It, you need economies of scale and economies of scale, a lot of uh, cash burn to reach out to that pair in that thing, which they bring in. Second is warmth. Warmth comes from local understanding, local interface, consumer relationship, and so on and so forth. So I feel that the grofer has launched phenomenal one. I, I always felt that जो ये बड़ी कंपनीज थी जब अपनी अपने स्टोर खोलती थी तो इनमें वॉम थी नहीं था वो लोकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग रखते थे जो करियाना रखता था लेकिन करियाना के पास कॉम्पिडेंस नहीं था क्योंकि वो ना बाइंग कर पा रहा है ना ही स्ट्रक्चर है ना टेक्नोलॉजी है ना ही कुछ है अगर आप इन दोनों को मिला दो अगर आप एक तरफ से करियाना की स्टोरी को स्ट्रॉन्ग कर दो कि एक लोकल ऑन्टरप्रनोर जो अपनी मार्केट को समझता है वो अपने बिजनेस को रन करता है इन्वेंट्री मैनेजमेंट करता है श्रिंकेज मैनेजमेंट करता है पीपल मैनेजमेंट करता है कंज्यूमर रिलेशनशिप मैनेज करता है वो वॉम से आता है और कॉम्पिडेंस जो है वो कंपनी देती है क्योंकि उसके पास सप्लाई चेन है उसके पास इंटीग्रेशन है उसके पास डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हाउसेज हैं और स्ट्रक्चर है सो दैट्स वॉट दिंग एंड दिस इज अः पावरफुल आइडिया एंड सेवन इलेवन वॉज सेवन इलेवन इट बिकेम अ ग्लोबल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विद वन लैक स्टोर ग्लोबली बिकॉज इट गॉट दिस टू थिंग्स गोइंग टूगेदर वॉम एंड कॉम्पिटेंस सो सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द बिजनेस मॉडल इज द प्रोडक्ट लाइन यू नो सो टूडे देर इज अ a bit of a while national brands are always there but a lot of regionalization also happens in kiryana jaise for that matter aaj agar mustard oil le lo aap to mustard oil hindustan ke andar alag alag jagahon pe alag alag bikta hai uh, so so there is a lot of localization how that is been addressed by grofers uh, how do you really understand a local market and address that and i will also extend this question ki bhai कुछ सिटीज में आपने बोला कि आप जैसे फ्रूट एंड वेजिटेबल ऐड करना चाहो तो ऐड कर सकते हो या कोई ऐसा सप्लाई चेन जो वहां रिक्वायरमेंट होता है जैसे यूटिलिटी प्रोडक्ट्स होते हैं जो ये यू वाइपर्स हो गए या कुछ और हो गया जो जो चीजें लोग रेगुलर अपने होम के लिए कंज्यूम करते हैं वो भी करियाना ही डिलीवर करता है जो टिपिकल सुपर डिलीवर करता है सो so, कौन से प्रोडक्ट और वो क्या अप्रूवल आपसे होगा हाउ डू यू अप्रूव दैट स्पेशली फ्रूट एंड वेजिटेबल बिकॉज इट कैन बी अ गुड अपॉर्चुनिटी so see uh, of course the overarching cap would be that you know we store something that is only sellable in a supermarket right for example i would not i would not stock uh, you know slippers in a supermarket i'm just giving a quoting a very random example right so uh, we would be of course having that cap and uh, the store format itself is 1000 to 2000 square feet right so wherein we are obviously and we are deliberately stocking uh, you know uh, limiting the size of the store so that we are able to get as close to the customers as possible and at as less uh, cost as possible right so uh, we would be stocking what is most efficient in the store and of course we have our city teams uh, getting those uh, local insights from time to time right so while uh, you would see a complete different mix of what grofer sells in delhi versus what it sells in hyderabad for example right so wherein we of course uh, tag along uh, in terms of building a lot of uh, local insights and we do a lot of local benchmarking to be able to sort of put the most optimum inventory on grofers online as well as offline right apart from that so in the categories that we sell right so whatever uh, we would be stocking in would be going through grofers okay so if the if if anyone wants to stock something that we do not sell they would obviously Uh, you know they could obviously suggest to us you know these are something that we think as a very good opportunity and we actually look forward for such insights now because again the partner we look at the partner is not just you know something that we support but also someone who would support us in return and was of being able to build those local insights right so we would be taking in those insights and we will be trying to get vendors ourselves right for those categories which we do not deal in uh, like fruits and vegetables which we are talking for example right we would uh, dairy dairy can be another dairy, yes yes fresh or uh, you know bakery items and everything which have typically a very low shelf life uh, the operations would be much more efficient if managed locally so we would still leave that part to the stores right so wherein uh, of course we would be supporting them with our post system wherein they'll be able to build uh, the inventory in the post itself but uh, the sourcing would still be uh, you know done locally right and we would be allowing that to so Absolutely, and I think what we have answered. One, uh, I would like to put this perspective that four uh, categories are always there in any retail business. One is called destination product, specialty product, and core product. Core product, 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 core
depending on where you are you can even complement this with some of the other categories which can increase your purchase cycle fmcg is a normally purchased once in a week kind of a life cycle uh, anything which can enhance this should also be added there is no problem like a dairy dairy is a almost a daily product and i think like bread if you there is a credible player you can add that and i think and vegetable fruit and vegetable is very tricky is not for everybody because logistics is very quick but in some places where say you have a mother dairy as a partner or any other players as a partner then you can do it because it looks sometimes very attractive but it is very difficult to manage but dairy is a is no brainer because it's a packed product it has to come in a lot of local good credible companies are there in every city bangalore has nandini uh, delhi has mother dairy uh, haryana punjab has vita and verka so these are good cooperatives who would love to be part of it and don't create your own category always work with something which you can do that so then it becomes a very interesting uh, space now i'll, I'll also yeah. just add on to that mr maria quickly so uh, from time to time we are also uh, you know trying to partner locally to be able to provide uh, these categories as well for example we are working very closely uh, in a couple of cities where we are trying to build local partnerships for fnb deliveries also right so where uh, we uh, we would be providing them we would obviously be uh, you know being able to do it as well but where we are not able to do it currently we would still leave it for outsourcing that's something that's right yeah that's very good point and i think uh, it creates a greater capability because jab log uh, daily khareedne aate hain to aapki sales aur badhti hai right. another area which you should really work is improving margins some yeah. products which give you good margins but never try to do that because grofers brand is very very strong they don't want to spoil the brand anything which is substandard local purchase yeah. uh, one should really avoid because that's not something which needs to be done now let's go on the on the on the supply chain part of it and we have touched upon this in terms of doing it so all supply chain really comes from you and how the ordering happens with the franchisee and what is the life cycle of supply uh, which comes through so uh, typically we stock about 2 to 3 weeks of inventory so it depends upon the store size and you know what is the capacity of the store and how much we are able to sell from the store right so the way that we try to uh, if, uh, make this efficient is by closely monitoring what's at the inventory what is selling and what's the demand that is being projected right so we closely monitor these three factors and we derive a component on uh, what is the consumption per day right so basis that we replenish the inventory and this would be a function of how fast uh, you know you are churning the inventory from the store like i said earlier as well right so uh, uh, we we see so because Uh, we could be you know transferring inventory as fast as almost every day you know to uh, you know let's say seven days once in seven days right so that is really a function of uh, how the uh, the store is performing and apart from that uh, uh, like i said uh, in terms of building efficiency into what is being stocked at the uh, store we would be pulling out whatever is not uh, selling and we would be stocking in you know what is being uh, what is you know actually required at the store right and of course we do have uh, certain checks and parameters and certain sop guidelines to make sure that you know we are stocking and uh, you know we are not selling anything uh, close to an expiry date or something like that right does that does that answer yeah absolutely absolutely and and that brings in another question for for uh, on the supply chain is is leftover uh, stock or a slow moving stock or anything which needs to be done what happens on that how do we really address that situation because if say a particular category doesn't move or or doesn't have that demand uh, or I, I, any damages happens in supply chain say you got something which came in how does you address that sure so uh, anything that reaches the store right they go through a, a qc process a quality control process wherein they uh, each uh, all the products are checked for the quality and all those damaged would be returned at doorstep so anything that is damaged and returned at doorstep would not be charged for and whatever goes into the shelf would essentially be what the uh, partner is essentially stocking in the store and what they are paying for right so now uh, the way that you would be looking at it is the damages that happen at the store would be ultimately the responsibility of the store partner and you would be of course setting strict guidelines to be minimizing these damages but uh, anything that is not selling but that is returnable right that we pick back right absolutely and so it's a another point which i would say very strongly is that this is a owner operator model is business mein aap kabhi galat nahi ja sakte agar aap khud involved hain bahut sare log investor bante hain aur business pe involved nahi hote inke sath challenges hote hain kyunki wo check nahi karenge kya aata hai 
हमने फ्रेंचाइज इंडिया हैज वर्क विद मदर डेरी एट वन पॉइंट टाइम एंड वेयर वी फाउंड रिसर्च कि जहां पर भी ओनर इन्वॉल्व था वो प्रॉफिटेबल थे सारे स्टोर्स जहां पे ओनर नहीं इन्वॉल्व था वो सारे लॉस मेकिंग थे क्योंकि इन्वेंट्री जो सुबह आती थी जो ओनर खुद लेते थे इन्वेंट्री को या इन्वॉल्व होते थे या अपने सुप्रीविजन में करते थे उनको पता था कि क्या चीजें लेनी है क्या नहीं लेनी है और जो नहीं करते थे वो लॉर्ड ऑफ रॉन्ग स्टॉक यूज टू कम इन स्पेशली वेन यू कम ऑन फ्रूट एंड वेजिटेबल इट बिकम्स वेरी चैलेंज सो इट्स ओनर ऑपरेटर मॉडल अनदर एडवाइज आई विल से लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल आर आइसिंग की मैं लोन लूंगा लोन बहुत एक्सपेंसिव है इंडिया के अंदर बहुत ध्यान से लेना चाहिए क्योंकि कई लोग बिजनेस शुरू करते हैं और वो लोन ले लेते हैं और और स्पेशली एनबीएफसी और उनसे लोन ले लेते हैं बारह चौदह परसेंट पंद्रह परसेंट की ब्याज देते हैं तो वो भी कभी कभी नहीं चलता है क्योंकि ये बिजनेस टाइट है ये अच्छा बिजनेस है क्योंकि इसमें आपका कोई स्टॉक रिस्क नहीं है आप एक दिन चाहो एक दिन में एग्जिट कर सकते हो सारा बिजनेस बिक सकता है सारा सामान बिक सकता है और ये इसकी खास बात है इस बिजनेस की लेकिन ये मार्जिन इसमें कम होते हैं बहुत मार्जिन बड़ा बिजनेस नहीं होता तो इसमें ऊपर से आप अगर बड़ा लोन ले लें आपको 12-15 परसेंट बैंक को देना है तो आप शायद अपनी आर नहीं निकाल पाए तो मेरी एडवाइस रहेगी कि लोन लेने से पहले जरूर सोचिए और कोई गलत लोन मत लीजिए और सॉफ्ट लोन तो बिल्कुल मत लीजिए कि ये जो मार्केटों में लोन मिलते हैं दो परसेंट के और उसके ये तो कभी नहीं लेना है क्योंकि ये तो बहुत बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है क्योंकि कभी आप पैसा दे नहीं पाएंगे क्योंकि इतना मार्जिन नहीं बन पाया था तो ये बिजनेस बहुत अच्छा है अगर आप ओनर ऑपरेटर हैं छोटी टीम रखिए खुद इन्वॉल्व हुई है तीन चार घंटे दो घंटे खुद लगाइए तो आप बहुत कामयाब होंगे इस बिजनेस के अंदर दैट्स वेयर आई वुड आई वुड स्ट्रांगली से एंड दैट्स द वैल्यू ऑफ इंडियन शॉपकीपर स्टोरी इंडियन शॉपकीपर इज द मोस्ट पॉपुलर शॉपकीपर इन द वर्ल्ड बिकॉज वी आर मोस्ट हार्ड वर्किंग इन द वर्ल्ड अगर आप अमेरिका में जाएं यूरोप में जाएं कहीं भी जाएं अगर आपको दिखेगा कोई शॉप चल रही है और इस पर कोई काम हो रहा है तो आप देखना ज्यादा ज्यादा टाइम आपको हिंदुस्तानी दिखेगा बैठा हुआ जो मेहनत करता है और वो करता है तो मुझे लगता है कि हम कभी कभी अपने देश में उतनी मेहनत अपने स्टोर में नहीं करते यहाँ पर हम दूसरे पे छोड़ देते हैं जब हम अमेरिका जाते हैं लंडन जाते हैं तो वहां पर हम सब खुद स्टोर में बैठते हैं और खुद काम करते हैं तो दैट्स वेयर आई थिंक सोसाइटी हैज टू चेंज वी शुड वी शुड बी प्राउड टू वर्क इन आर ओन बिजनेस एंड टेक केयर ऑफ द बिजनेस एंड देन आई थिंक इट इज अ मच स्टेबल बिजनेस नाउ आई लाइक टू इन्वाइट सोनिया फॉर योर क्वेश्चन एंड देर इज अ लॉर्ड ऑफ क्वेश्चन आई थिंक वन एटी टू स्टिल ओपन एंड सो एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो कीपिंग अप वॉट है आंसर होम डिलीवरी इज वन very big aspect has come in so i think we have not touched upon home delivery how it works or especially jo online ke order hai wo kaise hum service karte hain hmm right over to you sir yeah thanks so much shodhan just to start off with and for all the viewers hey this is one business opportunity in india which is uh, the market overall is about 19.9 lakh crore it's a huge market which accounts for almost uh, 48% of uh, the retail consumption which happens in the country and uh, also to add and what grofers has uh, done and this is one category which had uh, in the past remained very immune uh, uh, to the digital disruption until recently and today what retailers are doing is they are focusing on turning their stores into experiential destinations and bringing technology innovations uh, integrating both online and offline and uh, so what uh, uh, grofers is offering is a hybrid uh, model and we are also seeing a big change in how people are consuming and purchasing channels have changed and grofers is also offering a very dynamic inventory management which is not possible when you run these uh, smaller stores or by your own and second uh, uh, part uh, is also convenience economy more than ever this has become very very important and economy where consumer has the control he expects to be empowered as he purchases his goods and services so so then i'll take some questions from the, the audience i know we cannot cover all of them but first and foremost you know we i would like to talk about the data points because you're largely a tech driven company uh, you have a lot of data you've been involved in uh, uh largely uh, online uh, delivery in the last few years uh, i like to also understand because i see some of the questions coming on that because user data is very critical in selecting the location uh, and also good catchment or demand for a specific uh, food type so what help will grofers give one and also one question which i want to add uh, from our uh, uh, viewer is uh, is there also some kind of analytic which goes to the franchisee on fast moving and slow moving products yes uh, so uh, like i said uh, uh, first of all thanks for your thanks for the questions and uh, like i said right so uh, the we closely monitor the inventory at in real time right so we have uh, 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 our own proprietary process system and we also have entire uh, machinery in the back end a, a team of people who are closely monitoring what's selling across markets and you know who are sort of deciding what's the most uh, optimum inventory that we should be stocking at a warehouse level right so we have an entire team of people you know who are working on what's best for the customer right and you know what should be the 
what should be the price and you know how what should be the discount and you know uh, how should i be able to take this to the customer right so there is an entire team of uh, sitting for that so we will definitely be building on the insights that you know growers has sort of uh, you know built over uh, the years and we will be passing on these insights to the stores as well you know where and we say that uh, you know this is what your product mix should look like you know this is what the pricing should look like you know this is where you should put your product in the store to be able to drive it as fast as possible you know and of course you will be saying what should be the kind of promotion that it should look like you know uh, when should you probably give a very huge discount on that when should you run very good promotions on a particular sku and when should you sort of try to maximize on margins on that right so these are some insights that we provide on a day to day basis so they they have uh, the entire cost system right in front of them so they get to see all the dashboards and everything on that apart from that they do get emails and everything from our uh, analytics system saying you know what is performing what is not performing and, you know if if we were to change planogram or if we were to you know try out some experiments in the store to sort of uh, you know sell more right uh, we would be providing that data as well so we also have a team of people who are looking very closely at the retail operations so in fact uh, in fact i had the team as well so i take care of partnerships and retail operations so wherein we say that even after you are onboarded i mean we'll be the onboarding entity but we'll also be supporting you in running the operations right so it's not like you know once you're onboarded you're you know passed off to another inventory and whatever uh, you know was communicated to earlier is not being what's happening actually right so that way we keep very tight uh, you know um, uh, uh, relationship between Uh, as and the partner and make sure that you know entire thing runs smoothly for them so oh, now staying on the uh, inventory and the stock should a uh, few questions which i want to link you know what is the stock rotation expected in this kind of business and based on, on your own experience of running these 17 stores would you want to give uh, maybe uh, some examples and second is uh, uh, perhaps uh, you know uh, the blend because we talked about uh, private label and there also branded products what yeah. ideally is the mix of these two products uh, in a store right so uh see we have our own private labels right and growers private labels have gotten a very good uh, you know take rate on the on our online platforms and these in fact have been competing with the best of the national brands as well in terms of you know in terms of the gmv that they are contributing to us so if you look at our online space right we are already generating around 40% of our gmv purely from our private labels so of course we'll be passing on this mix to the stores as well and uh you know given uh, the nature of private labels right these would be helping drive the loyalty at the stores as well because these are sort of exclusive to these stores and to the growers channels right so wherein we would see a lot of uh you know discounts a lot of uh you know uh good uh, offers being passed on through our growers market uh, to our, through our growers brands but that said we have a uh, uh, very good uh, you know supply chain for our national brands as well wherein we are able to stock the best products and command the best margins from the brands you know and which would later translate to discounts right so uh, you would not see you know growers brands uh, as the only brands which are in discount but you would see a mix of national brands and growers brands giving very good discounts to the customers right okay very helpful and also apart from loyalty there's good margins which one can have on a private label Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Shudan, another question which I want to pick, you know, between online and offline, what is the ideal mix the one should have at the store? You know, the revenue which comes from these two sources. So typically, it it would look fifty fifty in the long run. I mean, to, uh, around down three to four months, uh, your store would look contributing around fifty percent from online and fifty percent from offline. Uh, typically, because uh, see, online is a function of your capacity, right? In terms of how many manpower are you able to put. and basis that manpower we cut out the polygon and basis that manpower your capacity and the population density around your area right we cut out the polygon and we say that you know this is your capacity and you will be getting these many orders from your store but your offline would be where you know you could uh, reach out to as many customers as possible so there are essentially and virtually no limits in terms of the number of customers that you could get offline right so ideally you would want to maximize the number of footfall in the offline space and sort of uh, treat all online sales as a buffer so that you know you are building a consistent uh, revenues through your off- online sale and your offline will become your revenue generating machine 
uh, as far as offline is concerned sorry online is concerned you know there's a big percentage about 45 what percentage uh, which comes to a grofers as a royalty uh, what all uh, this includes you know who takes care of logistics uh, at the cost of logistics here so uh, if you if you were if you had, i'm sorry if i had missed out uh, touching on the delivery fee the delivery component also would be taken care of the, by the partner so the partner would have his own delivery fleet and the cost would be borne upon by the partner themselves right so uh, the royalty that we charge is 45% on the gross margin 55 55% is of the gross margin is what uh, the partner would get so out of this 55% so this would typically look like around you know 6 to 7 7% 8% uh, and 2% is what we would consider as a delivery fee you know 2% 1 and a half to 2% right? so net net they would be getting around 5% on the online sale Sure. Now, staying on that, because I see one of our viewers, uh, Vishnuji, has written, when we talk about online delivery, we would also need maybe additional staff, like you mentioned, and we would also need vehicle for that. And is that computed in the overall investment of uh, 30 lakhs, uh, one? And second, what kind of uh, staff is required uh, uh, to service uh, both these demands? Correct. So, uh, see. Uh, I'll take these two separately. So one thing is your online uh, online um, and delivery staff and your offline store staff, right? So your offline st uh, store staff uh, would typically, uh, uh, you know, be people who are experienced in uh, managing store operations, who are willing to give, you know, that uh, length of hours, uh, staying at one place and being able to serve the customer. Uh, while online staff would typically include your delivery fleet. Uh, these guys would be the ones, you know, who would go pick the products at the store, quickly wrap them and go deliver it to the customer and within the timeline, right? So uh, we would be supporting you in picking up the stuff, but you would be recruiting the stuff. And typically the reason behind this is that, you know, a store will be most efficient when the manpower is uh, owned, I'm sorry, is, you know, like recruited and managed by the partner themselves, right? without we would not want to treat them as our employees we would be treating you would be treating them the partner would be treating them as a partner's employees right so that is how the you know the relationship uh, we would want to build between the partner and the store uh, staff as well right so uh, we would be leaving the entire store operations to the partner uh, on the platforms that you would require we would be providing the platforms in terms of uh, you know so once an order is placed online, right? Uh, how does that come to your store? How does that you know show on the delivery person's app? And with how does that person go and deliver to the uh, customer? So we will be performing, uh, 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 providing all the platforms and also require training to be able to do that. Apart from that, the store team also gets time to time training on you know how should you sell more, how should you sort of uh, talk to the customer, you know, retain the customer and stuff like that. Right. I'll take a question from Sairam who wants to know in case of uh, any discounts which are announced by grofers and we're seeing all that happening because of festivities uh, around, will that reduce the margin for a franchisee or there's any uh, participation uh, which the company would do? So this is yes and no, right? So uh, essentially we pass on all the discounts that we get from brands, right? And typically uh, what we see is these translate into discounts at the store. So uh, depending on, uh, you know, depending on the time of the sale and depending on the time of when you had procured your inventory, you would see that shift in the margins. Of course, what we see is that you would face, uh, you would take a hit on margins uh, during the sale period, but that should translate into getting more customers, right? And again, uh, what even Mr. Maria had pointed out earlier, right? Uh, this is not a margin scheme, I and mean, this is- Volume. This is a volume game, exactly. So wherein we are, we should be ideally trying to, you know, maximize the number of customers that come to my store and maximize how much uh, order uh, value uh, that I'm able to sell to the customer. Right? And margins would be your uh, sort of end product, but that should not be your focus. Your focus should be on uh, getting as many customers as possible. Another important uh, question would be uh, the rollout uh, because we're seeing the response coming from all across, you know, which is tier one, tier two, and you know, from top to bottom, uh, we have people writing in. Would you want to maybe uh, expand on the locations or the focus cities, and even if it is, you know, say five or six clusters to start off with, do you want to put a vision of your Pan India uh, expansion and what time it would take for gophers to reach? It will help us in maybe filtering the candidates at this point in time. So, a lot of people are saying that like there is a beaconer, there is an inquiry from beaconer, good city, but somebody is saying that you don't have a supply chain. So, how do we really find out where the clusters are and talk about the 12 clusters which we really talked about? Sure. See, so uh, the way that I would put this is 
see, we would want to expand Pan India, right? But uh, in the next six months, if I look at right, we would be focusing on uh, a few clusters. So I would just quickly name out the clusters. So one thing is your NCR region, around NCR tier two, tier three cities around NCR. Uh, then you have your Rajasthan uh, and region around Jaipur. Uh, then you have Hyderabad, uh, Andhra and uh, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana region. And you have Tamil Nadu region uh, from Chennai. So the way, uh, and uh, then you have uh, your uh, Punjab and Haryana belt. Right. So what we, and of course, uh, your UP belt, UP is our, in, uh, in fact, one of the biggest focus right now, right? Like, of course, UP, Andhra, Telangana, you know, I think where most of the participants are also coming from today, you know, these are essentially our hotspots and we would want to get there as fast as possible. In fact, we are, you know, we have recently opened uh, a store in Unnao in, 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 in uh, UP as well, right? Uh, also, uh, so these are the clusters and the way that we will be expanding right now is we will be looking at a 300 kilometer radius from our existing warehouses. Uh, probably we would be giving you the finer details on, you know, which, if your city is eligible for it or not, once you reach out to us, but uh, broadly uh, we are open across these cities. And at later stages, we would be expanding in, in Gujarat, in West Bengal, uh, in Maharashtra and in Karnataka as well. Does that answer? Sure, yes, it has. Even and how about the other uh, territories or states? Uh, would you want to give visibility on those two? One and second, uh, would you also be looking at maybe a master model uh, in locations or states we're not present where somebody comes and takes care of warehousing, uh, opens the outlet, also sub franchises uh, mm -hmm. further? Is that an option available uh, at this uh, time? Yes, uh, we would be definitely considering such options as well. Uh, while we are not proactively looking for anything like that, because again, we want uh, people who are actually invested in the business, right? So we want mm -hmm. people who are willing to spend those hours required at the store. So if if the person is willing to do that while being able to, you know, take responsibility of territory, we would definitely be looking, you know, to sort of uh, get in an in in, in in an interaction with the person. But uh, yes, to answer your question, that is open. Sure. And you know, is there a lock-in period? I see some of our uh, viewers talking about a lock-in period. Is there a lock-in? Yeah. So, so the way that we are doing it right now is it's a two-year. Uh, the agreement would be valid for two years plus with uh, one-year automatic renewal. Post which, uh, depending upon the relation, depending upon uh, how the partner wants to take it forward, we would be uh, extending the uh, the, uh, the agreement as well. And what is your, uh, you know, feedback on what kind of working capital should a franchisee uh, keep uh, availability of? And, so, and how long do you see the gestation uh, to reach maybe the optimum level uh, for a store? What you would see is, uh, you know, you would reach an OPEX positive uh, in anywhere between three to six months, depending upon how fast you're able to settle out your operations and how soon you're able to reach out to your target segment in the vicinity. Uh, but... Uh, what we would be seeing is uh, for the first three to six months, right? They would be typically investing out of the pocket. So a working capital of around 20 to 25 lakhs would be you know, a very good safety net to have. While you know you would be investing essentially 15 to 16 lakhs in the business, you would have a butters to fall back onto, right? So that was good. Yeah, another question, you know, which is uh, perhaps which I'm seeing, uh, which is common all across because I see some of them already have properties and some locations where uh, we know gophers want to enter what would be the application process? You know, how are we filtering uh, uh, the candidates? Because there's a huge uh, uh, response which have come in. Maybe if you can uh, put that also across on the verification process of the partners or uh, the property verification process, maybe the TAT, uh, which typically would be involved uh, in the entire process. Sure. So once once you get in touch with us, once you have the entire uh, understanding of the business model and once you go through our terms and conditions, right? The partners would be asked to fill a couple of forms on uh, the personal details and on the property details. So, of course, for people who do not have a property right away, uh, you may not fill this right away. But uh, for people, uh, but the partner details is something that we would require. And this would be required for everyone who is involved in the ownership of the business. So if there are two, three partners, we would be requiring around two, three profiles. Uh, profile forms to be filled, right? So this would essentially, uh, you know, be asking for your identity card, your bank statement, and how uh, your credit score is performing and stuff like that. Apart from that, uh, the way that we would be uh, closing out on the leads is first, we do a check of the profile and the properties, and then uh, we get into uh, calls and we, you know, get into meetings. Of course, right now we are doing most of the meetings and everything remotely, but while being able to do so, we try to, you know, understand as much as possible about the partner. 
and then uh, give a final go ahead. And of course, this would be very closely tied to the location also, uh, wherein or, you know we would be giving a final go ahead only once we close down both the partner profile and the property. Great. Uh, uh, also, sorry, I just missed out on the TAT. Uh, so the TAT would look anywhere between 48 hours to around seven days. 48 hours for essentially the profile verification and everything. Post that, you know, uh, the multiple interactions and everything would take about five to six days. Very helpful. Shabdan, while I see a uh, huge uh, list of questions which still remain uh, unanswered and you know because of the paucity of time, we'll not be able to take all of these. Uh, maybe Gaurav, you want to pick any questions or you want to ask? So I'm getting a lot of questions from Bombay, yeah, yeah. places like that where people are asking. There are great priority markets, but you know, one thing I liked about growers is that they don't want to rush into cities or neighborhoods, which doesn't justify your ROI. You know, while so, but in every neighborhood there is a a cheaper location also. So if you're able to source a property which is less than say 75, 80 thousand rupees kind of a property. In the green century cities also, Delhi, Noida, Gurgaon, uh, somebody is, Purnima is written on Dadar. Dadar is, can be a great market, very, very good market, very congested, a lot of investing. But Dadar mein kuch neighborhood hai, aise, jahan par aapko aisi property mil jayegi. Agar to aap property source kar paayin, aur hamari bhi puri team hai, uh, all India level pe, franchise India ki uh, company hai, Remax, jiski puri team India mein hai, 75 cities ke andar, hum bhi aapko property source karne mein help karenge. लेकिन वंस जो प्रॉपर्टी अप्रूव होती है ग्रोफर से ग्रोफर का एक प्रोसेस है वो प्रॉपर्टी और रेंटल अप्रूव करने के बाद ही आपको अप्रूव करेंगे तो ये अपॉर्चुनिटी बीएनसी सिटीज के लिए तो बहुत ही अच्छी है क्योंकि आप आप अगर आप कोई छोटे सिटीज के अंदर आप जैसे पानीपत में किसी ने पानीपत के लिए लिखा तो पानीपत में तो आपको 30000 की भी प्रॉपर्टी मिल जाएगी 40000 की मिल जाएगी और आपको ऑनलाइन बिजनेस भी मिलता है अच्छा बिजनेस मिलता है तो ये सारा बिजनेस में सिर्फ एक ही फिक्स्ड कॉस्ट है इंपॉर्टेंट वो है ऑक्यूपेंसी कॉस्ट ऑक्यूपेंसी कॉस्ट में गड़बड़ नहीं होनी चाहिए अगर वो गड़बड़ नहीं होती है तो आपका बिजनेस हमेशा चलेगा दूसरा काम करिए काम के बिना कोई बिजनेस नहीं है बहुत सारे लोग हैं जो प्रॉपर्टी बनाते हैं बोलते हैं कुछ भी बिजनेस दिला दो और बाद में कहते हैं बिजनेस नहीं चलता है क्योंकि नहीं चलेगा क्योंकि आप खुद काम नहीं करते अगर ये दो चीजें आप डाल सकते हैं तो ये बिजनेस आपके लिए बहुत अच्छा है और आप हमेशा कामयाब होंगे इस बिजनेस में क्योंकि इसमें कोई स्टॉक का रिस्क नहीं है स्टॉक का बिल्कुल कोई रिस्क नहीं है और आप बना सकते हैं बिजनेस को सुपर का बिजनेस हिंदुस्तान का सबसे मुझे लगता है सबसे पुराना बिजनेस यही है हमें यही आता था As Indians, we are, we are proud shopkeepers. हम एक चीज एक रुपए में लेते हैं और उसके ऊपर दस पैसे अपने लगा के आगे बेच देते हैं तो ये हमें बहुत अच्छा आता है वी ऑल नो इट वेरी वेल एंड वी आर हार्ड वर्किंग पीपल सो इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन बिजनेस लाइक दिस दिस कैन बी अ ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटी वी वेरी हैप्पी बिकॉज अलॉट ऑफ पीपल वर राइटिंग टू आस ऑलमोस्ट एवरी डे वी गेट थाउजेंड इंक्वायरीज एंड आउट ऑफ थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड वज गेट मी अ ग्रोसरी ब्रांड गेट मी अ ग्रोसरी ब्रांड एंड दैट्स ऑल वेट है सो नाउ वी हैव अ गुड ब्रांड गुड कंपनी वेरी स्टेबल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बट यू नीड टू हैव अ राइट लोकेशन एंड राइट नेटर नेबरहुड ढूंढिए जो बहुत कंजेस्टेड हो बहुत ज्यादा लोग रहते हो मिडिल क्लास पॉपुलेशन रहती हो और वो रेगुलर कंज्यूम करती हो वहां पे अच्छा स्टोर खोलिए जिसमें पार्किंग अच्छी हो गाड़ी आ सके आराम से और आ, सामान आराम से उतर सके खुद इन्वॉल्व रहिए देखिए कि राइट स्टॉकिंग है प्रोडक्ट मूव कर रहा है कस्टमर से रिलेशनशिप बनाइए क्योंकि होम डिलीवरी बहुत बड़ा बिजनेस होगा सो दिस इज अ गुड अपॉर्चुनिटी एनीथिंग विच यू वॉन्ट टू एड विच यू नो आई मिस्ट आउट Uh, Yodhan, over to you uh, for your question. I would, no, no, no. I would, I would, I would uh, firstly thank you uh, for that uh, speech. And, you know, so essentially, what we are saying is that same thing. You know, we would want people who are very involved in the business. We want people who are, you know, willing to invest that time and effort, and are willing to build that customer uh, uh, relationship. And of course, who are, you know, of course, who are willing to work in an organized setup. you know of course this these this is this is a very unorganized market but we are bringing in that organized uh, you know uh, part of it into the business and we want the partner to be able to work uh, you know closely in an organized setup and you know be able to uh, you know uh, enable those sops to run the store most efficiently right so we essentially are looking for people you know who are very passionate about the business and you know who are actually you know not just here for an investment purpose but you know we are actually there to sort of build the business right. owner operator we call it owner operator is the way to go that's where the value is your owner and your operator if you are willing to take that plunge this can be a great opportunity for all of you yes okay so sonia over to you and we are uh, uh, just for our audience uh, sonia and i am directly overlooking every single inquiry so please reach us on a whatsapp uh, which is a business hotline number 
uh, whatsapp it call number uh, we will return back to you uh, but pre qualified qualification is very important in this we don't want to rush and that's the job of franchise india and remax hum dono cheezon ko qualify kar rahe hain property bhi kar rahe hain business opportunity kar rahe hain there we will present the case to growers the grofer has a uh, selection team they would also qualify but turn around very really fast you know the good part about uh, i the technology companies is that they are faster than anybody because they process driven they work very fast so we have two forms to fill once the forms are done by you we'll send it quickly to them they can give us a tat once the site is approved 30 days to open up your own business these din mein aap apne business ke malik honge aur aap apna business shuru kar sakte hain ye bahut achhi opportunity hai lekin jaldi reach kariye right profile bataiye aur agar aap hamare ko right profile batayenge jitna aap apne bare mein right information de payenge utna franchise india isko jaldi process kar payega aur grofer ko present kar payega so now over to you yes uh, so then you want to say yeah i'm not going to Great. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Shyodan. I think this has been a very, very interactive uh, session. Uh, we had a very big uh, turnout of uh, people who came in, and there's also bigger audience which will also be listening on the Facebook Live. And uh, even as we were uh, doing this webinar, uh, we still had, you know, even as we are doing, we had a lot of calls coming in our call center with people interested to communicate, and a lot of calls that we received, people were not able to attend the webinar. And and friends, this is for everyone who's interested. Uh, and I'm repeating that, but because I think you might have missed some part of the presentation, we have a Facebook live which is going on. Anyone who wants to see a recording of this webinar can go on, uh, go on the Franchise India Brands uh, page of uh, Facebook and uh, see the entire recording of the webinar. And also, if you're interested, you need to reach out on the hotline of Franchise India, which is mentioned in the chat box. Uh, and share complete details uh, we have two forms which our teams will share with you once you do that we'll process the information share with the team at grofers and show them we would need maybe some days from you uh, you know based on the availability where we can bring these shortlisted candidates would you want to suggest which dates would these be because one day uh, would be too short uh, for you if you want so to give maybe every week, every week for next uh, 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 at least one or two days and uh, we also starting 14 days business buying festival which starts from tomorrow first to diwali isse acha mohurat nahi hai isse acha business nahi hai to agar aap interested hain to hum request karenge uh, grofer team ko kya aur kuch time nikale do ya teen din agle 10 dino ke andar 12 dino ke andar aapki one to one discussion karaye but usse pehle aapko apni detail bhejni padegi uh, kyunki wo detail agar hamare paas hogi to hum process kar payenge great thanks for any 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 message that you want to give for all Uh, audience which is listening to you both here and on facebook live is that for me yeah see we are just uh, you know looking to get to uh, let get to as many places as soon as possible so and of course uh, we are looking uh, very forward to you know working very closely with franchise india and sort of expanding our footprint in the next uh, you know couple of months and like i said again and i can't keep repeating enough we would want to you know get people who are actually willing to you know invest more than their money invest their time and effort in building the business and we'll be very happy to you know take out time to speak to as many people as possible and uh, sonia mr maria thank you so much and the entire team of franchise india it has been great talking and you know this has been sorry i've been uh, maybe a little nervous uh, in the beginning but uh, i i hope i been able to go and uh, i thank you that in last one week you really worked with very closely with us and and putting this whole thing together and and this is very exciting this is very exciting this shows uh, the entrepreneurial demand in this country you know the only way we can address the economy of this country is not by uh, fdi not by anything else this is a very large country it can be only addressed by uh, creating micro entrepreneurs jo aage logon ko employment denge apna vyapar chalayenge उससे इस देश की तरक्की हो सकती है और उसी को एम्पावर करने का बहुत अच्छा काम आप कर रहे हैं आपकी कंपनी कर रही है और ये काम से बहुत लोगों को ये आप कभी कभी तो हम बिजनेस की तरह सोचते हैं लेकिन मुझे लगता है कि ऐसे कामों से बहुत लोगों के रोजगार चलते हैं छोटे छोटे सिटीज में लोगों को काम मिलता है और आज की डेट में इससे बड़ी कोई जरूरत नहीं है अगर आप दस भी दुकान खोल लें और उनमें पांच पांच सात सात लोग करें चालीस पचास लोग इसमें इन्वॉल्व होते हैं ये तो आगे है इसके पीछे सप्लाई चेन है ट्रक ड्राइवर्स है Uh, whole so so ye yeah, this is a very big people empowerment program and which can help uh, both people to make a uh, decent money respectable incomes and create jobs in this country thank you so much thank you so much thank you very much over to you archana for your final thank you and uh, for uh, uh, for our audience so thank you so much yudhan for joining us
today and sharing this omni channel bankable operator opportunity with us we really appreciate the efforts you have put in within three days for this particular preparation we would like to thank our panel member for sharing your insights with us guys and the team we got exactly written queries and more than 500 uh, investors have joined us we really appreciate attention and your efforts and time put in by us uh, towards this particular webinar yes you can rightly connect with franchise india team at our business hotline number which is 9717683838 that's the number where you can share your profile your property location you can connect with us at our different social handles the recording of this particular webinar is available at the facebook page of franchise india brands limited go under video section you can also visit us at www.franchiseindiabrands under webinar session you will receive all the queries you can connect with management team of franchise india at their respective linkedin ids that's the information on your screen and tomorrow for business opportunity over chai webinar series we are inviting you for casa de mor it's sunday special for us it's india's number one home gardening brand and the team of casa de mor is coming and presenting their business ideas i second gaurav sir and tomorrow onwards we are inviting you for business buying festival for next 14 days we'll try to give you and represent top 3 brands during our this 12 pm webinar please do not miss chance and join us every day sharp 12 pm to understand and to join the journey of these great brands offering their diwali uh, offers as well as discounts to each one of you please join us today uh, please join us tomorrow for 12 pm webinar sunday special thank you so much for once again joining us today and showing your love and passion towards us thank you so much stay safe stay happy stay healthy thank you so much thank you very much thanks 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 Thank you so much Yudham. Bye so take much. care. Thank you. Bye take care. Bye.